I should tell you that I taught at the University of New Mexico for 33 years. It's useful to talk in terms of quotations and poems and stories. The quotation that comes to mind is one by Edmund Burke. It says, all that is necessary for evil to succeed is for good people to be silent. Your presence here reduces the chance that evil can succeed. Yesterday upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish that man would go away. Most people would think that that poem doesn't make any sense. But there are many people in this room who know that that poem makes sense. The man who was not there is still there. The terror that happened yesterday wakes up in the middle of the night. The pain and the emotional disaster that happened a long time ago is still around the corner. And you have to live with the fact that on the stair, that man will not go away. And I'm going to shift the focus to a different kind of hurt and just show you how there's similarities, especially in how we remember, how we keep the man off the stair, and yet the man is still on the stair. Let me, and, and it'll teach you something, hopefully, about the process of remembering and not remembering. Because sometimes we talk about remembering and not remembering like it's a clear thing. Either you remember or you don't. With the human psyche, the human soul, the human heart, the human mind is very complex and things are very that simple. Just give me one example. This is a young woman. Whole different kind of trauma. It was also trauma that happened because people were silent when they should have spoken up. I'm talking about the Nazi trauma. Because good Germans didn't speak up. This little girl, at 10 years old, was put in a camp. She was a beautiful little girl. She was a Polish girl. She was put in a camp. And one of the things that happened while she was at the camp is she was repeatedly raped by SS officers. And this is how she said, she said, Dr. Roll, I was raped almost every day, and I was only raped once. How can that be? She said, after the first rape, as soon as the SS officer would come into the room, I wouldn't be on my bed, on my cot. She didn't have a bed. I would be on the ceiling looking down. Some of you know what that is. That's dissociation. You're there and you're not there. You're being sodomized by a priest and you're there and you can feel the pain, but you're not there. Because it is too painful to be there. And so you go to the roof, you go to the ceiling, you go someplace else. That's what we mean remembering and not remembering. Let me tell you another story. This is a story of a person I met early in my career. I was working in an inpatient unit for people with very, very serious seating disorders. And we would meet for like two weeks. And then in the middle, the family members would come. And this woman would always say, you know, when you go to therapy, if, you, if you're married, you complain about your spouse. If you're not married, you complain about your family. And so she came and she complained about her family. But she said, my father was in a concentration camp and he never told me how horrible it was. So I feel excluded from his life because he didn't share the horror with me. And all of us in the group and you know, the, 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 the other participants and the other therapists, yeah, that is something. If your father went through something terrible, doesn't share it with you, you have been excluded from his life. So she repeated that a number of times. So when there was a family unit, family meetings, the other patients confronted him. Why didn't you ever tell your daughter about the horrors, your experience in the Holocaust? And the man, the father, said, darling, they were in Budapest, didn't I tell you that they rounded us up in the synagogue and they grabbed my wife and they pulled her away from me when I tried to pull her back to show an example? They kicked her to the floor and hit her on the head with rifles until her brains came out of her skull. Didn't I tell you that? And she said, yes, Dad, but you never told me what it felt like. By this time, we were amazed. What, what did you have to say more than that? He says, and didn't I tell you that when I was in the camp, I thought I saw my brother, and when I turned around to talk to him, one of the guards kicked me on the floor, and then other guards joined and kicked me, and the reason my arm is bent this way is because it never healed after that. And the woman said, yes, Dad, but you never told me what it was really like. 
By that time, we were all crying. So I put my hand on her shoulder and I said, Dad, I heard what you told me, but I did not let myself hear the pain because I could not tolerate that much pain. And then finally, with that moment, then she began sobbing and she could not stop sobbing because she did know what her father felt, but she didn't let herself remember it. She did not let it because it was too much pain. And only in that comfort of that group meeting, only in the comfort where she knew that she could speak out, was she able to finally say, she didn't have to say it, she cried for over an hour. After which we all did candles and said Kaddish, the Jewish morning prayer for her. And it took that long. It took that long for her to remember the pain. How could she not have felt that pain? Hearing that her father had to watch his wife kick to the floor and her brains oozing out of her skull. How could she not? But as a little girl, she couldn't tolerate that. And so it did not happen. The pain did not get through. And with every trauma, you only can let some of the pain through because it would be overwhelming. It would be too overwhelming and you would be destroyed. We have a way of protecting ourselves against enough pain that would kill us, that would destroy us, that would not let us go on. And those are the defense mechanisms. And we have different ways of doing that. We have different ways of blocking. Sometimes we'll block out, like the, 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 the young girl who was raped by the Nazis, she was on the ceiling. That's called dissociation. There's a way that you could be away from the reality even as you experience it. There's even some medications that they use for, for surgery that has the same effect. You cannot be there, and yet it's still there. And then when you are lucky, if you are lucky, something happens, and more and more of it's happening thanks to groups like you, where you connect again, come down the, from the ceiling, and cope with what you had to deal with because without coping it, it remains the man on the stair. The, the defense mechanisms we're talking about, not weird, strange things, we do them every day. And there, there's the one of intellectualization, where the, you're allowed to deal with the idea, but you take away the feeling. I have heard people, I have watched people discuss trauma like the idea, like somebody reporting on the news. And only sometimes after the fourth, after the fifth, after the sixth time, they can say there's not only the mind here and the memory and the elect, there's also feelings. And when the feelings come, they usually come in a flood. But they come in a flood when somebody else is there. See, one of the, one of the important things is to have somebody else there. And what part of our mission has to be is to be there so that no one has to continue suffering alone. tell you one poem and then I have to go and this is to help you to help me to help all of us as we continue this because it doesn't stop of course right it continues because the evil continues so we continue the earth stands out on either side no wider than the heart is wide above the earth there stands a sky no higher than the soul is high but east and west will pinch the heart that cannot keep them pushed apart. And he whose soul is flat the sky will cave in on him by and by. In your work, in my work, my prayer, my wish for you is that you have a stout heart and a powerful soul. Thank you very much.